Gay marriage now legal in the state of Illinois. Does that mean when Kansas lowered their taxes, a bunch of people said everybody would move to Kansas so their taxes would be lower? Now that Illinois has passed the gay marriage, does that mean all the gays are going to move to Illinois? I don't know. Um, who knows? But uh, that's now two states uh, that border Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois that um, are gay marriage friendly. So you wonder uh, if they move to Illinois or they get married in Illinois. Listen to this. Listen, listen to this legal quagmire. You are legally married in Illinois, but you live in Missouri. So what happens then? So federally, you're recognized as gay marriage, as married, but in the state, you're not. What a disaster that's going to be. But anyway. Uh, good morning this morning. Big 550 KTRS. It is a uh, Wednesday, and we should say that um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, we will tweet out each and every day. Uh, interviews and shows and everything else, segments of the shows with the video, uh, and then people commented on Facebook, so you can certainly follow us on Facebook and follow us on our show page and like our show page and like KTRS.com and like the fan page of KTRS. So we're out there uh, with uh, 21st century technology and the four HD cameras here in studio. Uh, It's a great way to um, watch the interview. I know a lot of people yesterday watched the interview of our conversation with Representative Bill Otto about the um, Bridgeton landfill that was on fire. Uh, We had that uh, show for you. And being a radio station, people don't necessarily think of video, but we had uh, the video feed going, and we tweeted that out, and people were able to look at it and talk about it and uh, discuss it and uh, agree and disagree. Uh, Also with uh, Daryl Strawberry yesterday, today we've got – Dr. Jeffrey Lowell, Cat Neville will have a couple of those restaurants. Um, so that's all. You can find that out on the web. Um, I want to talk about Richie Incognito because there's just something about this story that is so wrong and not the incident in and of itself of an NFL football player that is – bullying another NFL football player and a teammate. Now allegations are coming out that maybe, just maybe, the coaches took Richie Incognito aside and said, hey, toughen up this guy. That's the issue at hand. But as so many of these issues, it's now uh, taken from the locker room and splashed across the front pages. And not only... Um, is it just football, but it's now everyday life. And I am, I don't get outraged very often. I don't get upset very often. I don't get offended very often. I just don't. It's do whatever you want. What do I care? But the things that do outrage me and offend me and get me upset are weird. Just weird, you know, things that normally wouldn't upset most, most people, to me, it sticks in my craw. And this Richie Incognito story is one of those things that sticks in my craw. Uh, I w- don't think I was ever bullied. I was always the biggest kid in the class. I was always probably the most ath- athletic kid. So in terms of currency, those kids back in the day weren't necessarily bullied. Um, but we know in 2013, that's a different story. I know for a fact that there are there is a St. Louis Blues player out there whose son was bullied to the point where he was ready to leave high school because he was so bullied. I know captains of baseball teams that were bullied. Um, it isn't just the 98-pound Winkling who carries the tuba to class in the snow. Every kid in 2013 is susceptible to being bullied, and it's not – just, uh, hey, I'm afraid to go to lunch, fifth period, because I got to sit at the lame table and I'm going to be ostracized. It's We know it's 24 hours because of the social media world. We know it's constant. 
We know there's many more forms it takes, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or emails or websites or anything else. And it's constant. So it's changed dramatically. So now you have a situation where in 2013, it's not in junior high, it's not in high school, it's not in the fraternities or the sororities, it's now in an NFL locker room. And I have heard from, this is what sticks in in my craw, I've heard from listening to the wide variety of of opinions out there. I've heard from many ex-NFL players who basically are saying that Richie, they're, 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 they're somehow justifying what Richie Incognito did and that this guy, uh, the player who has since left the team, uh, didn't handle it right. That's not how you handle it. You handle it inside the ranks. You don't go outside the locker room. Um, you know, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to punch the guy in the face. I would have punched the guy in the face. Um, really? You're a commentator in 2013, and your comment on this is the guy should have punched Richie Incognito in the face? That's your, that's your philosophy, right? Um, he should, they should have told the team. But, well, now we're learning that maybe the team was the ones who were instigating this. There's no difference. I heard, and I, I, it was, I was listening to 101 ESPN y- yesterday. I was listening to R- Randy Carricker and uh, DeMarco Farr. And I, I, have, I only know DeMarco Farr from, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. I've never worked with the man. I don't, I, he seems like a very good guy. Uh, he's a Pac-10 grad, edu- well-educated, smart, intelligent, um, decent football player, well-respected in the community. I wanted to put my hand through the radio and, and, and shake him. He told a story yesterday on the radio. What are you talking about? Rookies get it all the time. Heck, when the rookies came to camp, we they took us out to dinner, and 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 we 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 uh, we uh, we we made them buy we made them buy us dinner. In fact, it was so crazy, we ordered things we had no intention of eating. We were ordering uh, uh, champagne and bottles of whiskey and and and, and cases of champagne, and, and and then we forced the guys to 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 pay for it. It's just what you do in the NFL. It's just the way it is. I'm sorry. I don't care if that's the way it is, and I don't care if that's the way it was. That's wrong on 800 different levels. There's a clip that came out yesterday in which Richie Incognito told Dan Lebetard, a sports radio host and columnist down in Florida, that he was going to go to the store and pick out his jet skis, and then he was going to tell the quarterbacks which jet skis the offensive line wanted. Well, they're going to buy us a present anyway, we, so we're going to tell them what it is we want. I mean, th- that isn't <laughs> – that's bullying. Forcing a person to do something through physical intimidation is the definition of bullying. And the fact that these football players think – Anything that Richie Incognito did is is acceptable on any level. It's it's one thing for the kid to bully the other kid. But when the kid who's being bullied goes to the parents or goes to the adults, in this instance, the sports media now know about it. And what does the sports media say? Well, Lyman will be Lyman. It's the NFL. The guy, all right, what he did was wrong. But, I mean, really? you got to stand up for yourself. That's why people who are bullied don't go to authorities. Because they. this is why rape victims don't stand up for themselves. This is why rape, rape victims don't go to the police. Because they say, who's going to believe me? And even if they do believe me, they're going to blame me. The 98-pound winkling in junior high isn't going go to the, go to the principal because why? Then these people are going to get in trouble. And then it's going to be worse for me the next time I go to the bus stop. All of these sports people who are somehow justified, well, it's the culture of the NFL. It's a rough and tumble game. It, it, it's uh, really, you're really scared about Richie, uh, f- you know, killing you. 
it is a travesty. It, it, this guy is being victimized again. Once through Richie Incognito, and two through the national sports media and all of the quote unquote teammates and NFL alumni who were saying to the guy, you know, toughen up, man up, come on. That's embarrassing. And as a guy who likes to watch sports, and I don't have this street cred of being in an NFL locker room, but you know what? I, I, you know who needs to man up? Every single NF, ex-NFL commentator who said, hey, man up, why don't you, why don't you be a little, oh, I, would, I would have punched him in the face. It's embarrassing. This, this poor guy is being victimized again. And nobody is standing up and calling out all these NFL players who are saying, well, what are you talking about? I, well, we, well, we, the rookies are supposed to buy dinner for the veterans. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take you to Ruth Chris. And I'll buy you steak. But you're going you're gonna to buy lobster and steaks and desserts and $3,000 bottles of champagne you have no intention of drinking just to harass me? It, it's outrageous. This, this poor guy is being victimized again. And this guy, who's taken a leave of absence, is absolutely no different than Megan Meyer, who committed suicide. The only difference is that this guy was older, and maybe he was a little, little maybe he realized there were other options other than, than, than taking your own life. But Megan Meyer was bullied to death. And we've seen it before. And I'm sure we'll see it again. And this guy, there's no difference. This guy is being bullied, and now he's, he's being victimized again. 314-969-KTRS, 1-888-550-KTRS. Or to the salesperson, you say, oh, by the way, uh, you're going to take me to dinner tonight. You're going to take out the whole sales staff tonight, and we're going to go to Ruth Chris, and I'm going to order things that I don't even plan on eating. And you're going to do it. You know why? Because you're new here, and that's the way we do things. That would last about four seconds. And if it doesn't, la- and if it just shouldn't exist in your company, it shouldn't exist in the NFL. Uh, oh, it's just a culture of the NFL. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a workplace environment, and the NFL players love to talk about, "Hey, it's a job. It's a job to go out that I got to go out and do. It's a job. You have to be professional, and it's a job." Well, you know what? Part of being professional is respecting the other people who are trying to do their job. Let's go to uh, Jim on line two. Jim, you're on the Big 550 KTRS Radio. Hey, good morning, McGraw. Morning, Jim. Thanks for calling. Hey, a lot of this stuff, in my opinion, starts in high school. Right. These coaches, I drive buses for a lot of Catholic schools to take them to sporting events, right. the teams, mm-hmm. and they make the, they'll make they be gathered around outside some of the kids, and I'll say, well, you guys can get on a bus. Oh, no, we're freshmen. we got to let – I says, you're a team. Work as a team. Right. I don't give a darn if you're a freshman, junior, sophomore, what. You're all a team. But these coaches, you know, they want certain ones to sit in the back, you know, and certain ones to sit in the middle and certain ones in the front. In the, well, the front's freshmen. I said, you're a team. And if the team loses, don't speak on that bus. I don't care if we're coming from Kansas City. Do not talk on that bus. Right. You know, they act like. The world came to an end because they lost a stupid football game. I, I, Whatever. Uh, you are singing my song, Jim. These football coaches, high school, junior high, professional, college, you name it, they think they are um, all the all-knowing, almighty, all-seeing, and you do it their way or somehow you are less of a human being. And if you don't, if you don't buy into this program a thousand percent, you know what? You're less than human and... I'm going to sick a player on you to get you back in line. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I see it all the time when we, we take these uh, teams to different events, you know. It's unbelievable. And these kids sit there like, if I was a, a kid on a bus, I'd tell them, you know, we're here to learn the game and learn how to get along with other people. If we win, that's good. If we lose, so we lost. Here's what I don't understand about all this, Jim. Thanks, th- th- thanks for the phone call, Jim. Thank you f- for your insight. Here's what I don't understand about these things. How many times do you see where the kid who's the freshman, he's got to, you know, jump into a, a, a dirty pond or he's got to, you know, eat a worm or something on those lines and, or push soap naked on all fours in the locker room? Yes, that happens. Um, 
They call it pushing soap with your nose in the locker room. I know. They're all they're all homophobic. But by golly, let's all run naked together in the locker room and push soap on all fours. But that's not homophobic. Um, so, uh, so they hated it being done to them. So what do they do when they're seniors? I hated it when I did it, so I'm going to make you do it. Uh, excuse me, where's the man up that says, you know what? I didn't like it as a freshman. I'm going to make sure when I have the power, that's not going to happen when I'm in charge. Um, I mean, what is going on in the world? Bill, line six, you're on KTRS Radio. Hey, love the show, as always. Um, as a kid, I was bullied from kindergarten all the way until I quit high school. Uh, I ultimately got to where I didn't want to get up and go to school because I knew I was just going to get picked on and bullied by everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, my whole life I've been a stereotypical fat guy. And uh, I quit school because, you know, everybody was bullying me. And, you know, I went back, I got my GED, I went to college. But I have found that as I've gotten to be an adult, I've run into people from high school and stuff, and they, they come up to me, and, you know, the first thing they say is, hey, man, I'm sorry. Right. You know, we were kids, we were stupid. But at, at the time, it made me consider, you know, hurting myself or, you know, taking a gun to school. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I could have gone either way. So at one point, I'm finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do either one of those things. I'm just going to walk away. I quit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? That's what this guy did. This guy did the smart thing, right? Jonathan Martin did the mature thing. He did the respectable thing, and now he's being ostracized as not being uh, tough enough to play in the NFL? I don't think it's right. And, it, and if the Rams have any kind of brain in their head, they're going to call this guy and go, hey, man, you want a job? Well, yeah, I, I think he just took a leave of absence. I don't know if he's still – I don't know if he's a free agent or not. But, but, but think about this for a second. Uh, Bill, thanks, for the, thanks for, the, for the phone call, and thank you for what had to be a very difficult uh, conversation to, to tell us about. But this Jonathan Martin, instead of taking a gun and, God forbid, going into the campus and shooting things up, instead of going into drugs, instead of becoming an alcoholic, instead of buying a gun and beating his girlfriend up or taking it out on his mother or his sister, his brother, his girlfriend, his son, his daughter, whatever, the, the Jonathan Martin says, look, as we know from bullying, it affects you mentally as well as physically. He said, I, I need to take a time out for my own mental well-being. He does the right thing. He does the mature thing. And what does the NFL uh, talking head world say? He's got a man up. You know what? He took it outside the chain of command. You know, okay, Cognito shouldn't have used any of those racial slurs. But that does not excuse the fact that this guy left the locker room and aired his dirty laundry. Are you kidding me? Are you somehow these 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 people are trying? Well, you know, uh, Richie Richie was a good good teammate when I knew him. No, you, by definition, you're not a good teammate if you pa- if you leave an email that says I'm going to slap your mother and kill you. There's, that's not a good teammate. It's you might think it's a good teammate, and you know what? You have a warped sense of reality. And these NFL players who are commenting, where. The outside of the NFL is not warped. Inside the NFL is warped, and you might be a victim of all of this as well. You're so skewed, and you've been so battered and beaten that you can't even understand that Jonathan Martin did the manly thing. Richie Incognito and whoever else told him to do it didn't do the manly thing. Jonathan Martin's the real man in this situation. 935 on the Big 550 KTRS by former NFL players who have basically said, stand up and be a man. That's why rape victims don't go to the police. That's why rape victims don't tell their parents. That's why rape, That's why uh, bully people who are being, being bullied don't tell the principal because it's worse if you talk. That's what all the NFL players are doing by talking about this in a way in which somehow justifies what Richie Incognito did. Dave, thanks for holding on. You're on the Big 550 KTRS. Hey, McGraw, I'm AM and a PM and the AM, too. You got it. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate the phone call. <laughs> um, I, I go back to the source. It's Richie Incognito. 
he's got the personality and the character of something you wouldn't wipe off your sh- or you would wipe off your shoes. You know what I mean? Right. And, and good for the guy. The incognito's a jerk. What the, what life does he have after football? Well, but 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 that's it's not the isolated incident of one player bullying an, another player. My outrage, while that's wrong in and of itself. My outrage is the reaction of the rest of the NFL. These ex-players who are co- going to the microphone saying all sorts of things like, well, he needs it's to toughen up. Well, you know what? The, the old, hey, that's the way things are done in, in the NFL is the most mindless answer at all. There used to be a rule that says that, uh, you know, black coaches couldn't coach. There used to be a rule that said black players couldn't, couldn't be quarterback. That's just the way things were done in the NFL. So to say that's the culture of the NFL, that's, 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 that's just ignorant on its face. That's wrong. You're right, McGraw. It's totally wrong. Keep, keep doing the good stuff, McGraw. Thank you. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Let's go to uh, Tim is on line one. Tim, you're on the Big 550 KTRS. Yeah, like the guy said earlier, this is taught in high school and grade school and everything else like this. Right. Uh, it, they're, they're basically coaches are sadomasochists who teach you how to deflate, demoralize, and defeat your enemy, right. which is the other team. The trouble is they don't teach the other side of that. You're, you're doing this for a reason. You're not going out in the public and defeating everybody you walk into. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're putting up for the, the guy that can't defend himself. That's what you're being taught. Right. Um, but the club, you know, as they get into college and, and actual NFL – all of a sudden, it takes uh, a, a, a really dark twist, and the sadomasochists become, uh, you know, psychotic, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, you got to remember uh, that these, the, the reason they think they can get away with this is because these are clubs. It's, it, well, they can get away with it because anytime somebody steps outside the line and, and has the audacity to actually tell the authorities— right. Oh my goodness! Then, then they're ostracized. It's almost like the NFL players are rallying the ranks around Richie Incognito. And 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 the, the whole problem is, is that the only time the NFL, the head, you know, psychotic, the only reason they do anything about it is because now the public is so outraged about it that they have to make the change. Right, because it is so bad. Right. It is so. You know, it's very similar, Tim, to the Catholic Church. Right. Oh yeah. You you were an abused altar boy. You go to your mother and you say, Mom, I think something's not right. What does your mother say? No, no, no. The Catholic Church can never do wrong. How dare you even insinuate that Father you know, ABC is, is doing some, something wrong? Shame on you. Go back to confession and confess that you're lying about our dear Father. Yeah, to the same guy who's raping you. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's it's all it's it's there's there's a very fine line, and it's the same in the Catholic Church, and it's the same in the NFL, and it's the same with the 13 year old girl who's who's being bullied in school. There is no difference. And and would anybody ever say to a to a to an altar boy who was abused, uh, you know what? You told the authorities. How dare you tell the authorities? You should have kept it in in house. Right. You would never do that. But in the NFL, he's being threatened. His mother's being threatened. He's calling every been, been called every racial slur in the book. And Richie Incognito says, "I'm going to kill you," and he should have kept it in house. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's he's being victimized once, and now he's being victimized again. And all the ex NFLers, one of them, should stand up and say. I put, and put their arm around Jonathan Martin and say he's not the one who did wrong. Uh, in this story in the Sun Sentinel this morning that now talks about how the uh, Dolphins might have actually instructed Richie to sort of toughen him up, in that same story, unnamed sources say, look, there are defensive players on the team that are going broke because the players on the Dolphins – are forcing all of these rookies to buy these veterans all of these things. No wonder all these players are broke by the time they leave the NFL because they're being broken by their own teammates. Imagine you walk into a job and they say, you know what, you owe us $30,000. I'm going to go and pick out my own jet skis. And I'm, I'm going to send you the bill. What? 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 It would be... 
it's 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 unacceptable. But we know it's unacceptable. But the fact that the ex NFL players are somehow justifying it. Well, if that's the way it's always done. I remember once I would have punched a guy in the face. No one's gonna do that to me. Okay, Mr. Tough Guy. It's unbelievable. Seven forty eight here, Big Five Fifty. KT. Let's go to uh, line uh, two. Bev, you are on the Big 550 KTRS. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> yes. Um, you know, this thing that, well, that's a football culture. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They're talking about concussions now in football, and most of the concussions happen from football. More football players right. have this problem. Gee, you're supposed to take that outside? You know, they don't tell them to man up, even though they're feeble-minded when they leave and they die sooner than any other sport. I'm sorry, but this how does threatening someone's mother or making them pay for your outlandish bills or what you bought, how does that toughen you up mentally for football? Mm -hmm. You have to explain that to me because it, there's no – it makes no sense. No, you're absolutely right, Bev. It's and just plain bullying just for the fun of bullying. And if people don't see that, these sports guys, I doubt if any, any of them have been bullied like that. And if you've ever seen somebody bully someone from the time they're little on up, I don't care how old you are, how big you are, that ha being bullied has nothing to do with your size. It has to do with your mental state. Uh, I agree, Bev, 350%. I mean, how can you say, well, he's a big guy. He's, what does that got to do with anything? No, that's exa that, that, that's a great point. That that just goes to show you how little you – if you say, how can that guy be bullied? He's six foot right. seven and he's Thank 300 you. pounds, and he's in the NFL. Some of the kids that were bullied the most in school were the kids that had about 50 pounds on everybody else, mm -hmm. and they just picked on them. That has nothing to do with it, how big you are. You're absolutely I mean, right. Come on, folks. You Use a little common sense. I know it's the NFL, but you – but you all can't be goofy. You know what, Bev? I, I, I'm so glad you, you called. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Thank you very much, Bev. Hi. You got it. Uh, she, she's, she's right on. She, and if I were Roger Goodell, commissioner of the NFL, I would send out an edict as fast as possible. Or if I was program directors or station managers or heads of networks, I'd bring all the NFL and be like, listen to what you are saying. You are justifying that this guy needed to man up. What do you mean? He, he's an offensive lineman. He pushes people around. What, somebody pushes him around? He can't take it? What kind of man is that? I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. He's such a man he had to buy $15,000 for a ski vacation because he wasn't man enough? That's toughening you up? Jonathan Martin did the manly thing. Richie Incognito did the cowardly thing. And and yet the response has been that Jonathan Martin needs to man up. Everything is upside down in this world. I know that there are captains of teams. Who in a million years would think that an, that an NHL player's son would be bullied, bullied to the point where he didn't have any friends and he didn't want to go to school? In what world do we live in where that could that kid would be bullied? Or the kid who's the best on the baseball team, who's the captain of the team? I know for a fact that these things go on every single day, and you listen to these stories, and you're like, what world do we live in where this is somehow acceptable? And you can't go to the parents, and then once, once the parents find out, then, then the kids feel... One, they feel bad because they're being bullied. And then two, they feel embarrassed because now their mom has to there come to their rescue. So the kid sits in silence and is tortured. We're smarter than this. We're better than this. And there's a reason why sororities and, and fraternities don't haze people anymore. There's a reason why we don't do these things. It's because we've evolved. And you know what? It's time for the NFL players and the ex-NFL players to evolve. And if this is the incident that teaches them a lesson, so be it. But I, I, I'm coming dangerously close to just never listening to an ex-NFL player ever again if they somehow justify that this Martin needs to man up. It's just so wrong. <sighs> All right. I said my piece. Listen to us. Uh, at KTRS, you can download the app, KTRS uh, App Store. Just download KTRS. It's a great way to listen to the station. Uh, you can watch us at KTRS.com. You can watch us at STLToday.com through our partnership with The Post. Uh, follow us on F 
Twitter, at McGraw Millhaven. Yell at us on Facebook, KTRS, webpage, and Facebook as well. All the TV, four HD cameras, Andrew Dowd, the director, all powered by our friends at Taliesin Technologies. Thanks for listening to me rant. I appreciate the phone calls. We'll do it all again tomorrow. A tout à l'heure.